Roll call, please. Trustee Waterman is absent. Trustee Mumson? Present. Trustee Stewart? Here. Vice President Ubaldi? Here. President Wilson? Present. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Report of, of actions taken in um, closed session. Um, no action was taken. Student discipline matters. We have before us the readmission of student F 2013 R3. Madam oh. President, if I may, mm -hmm. I move that we adopt the F 2013 R3 for readmitting. I would second. It's moved and seconded that we readmit student F 2013-R3. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Student F 2013-R3 is now readmitted. Minutes of the September 4th, 2013 Governing Board meeting. Director Ubaldi. Uh, Madam President, I just want to make one correction, and that was my my own doing. Uh, I made a statement, and I don't know what, what page it is, but I noted that the uh, VCAT donated fifteen hundred dollars to our uh, point of order. You did make the statement there. Yes. Okay. If the statement is incorrect, it doesn't matter because you made it during that meeting. Mm -hmm. And the minutes reflect exactly what you said during the meeting. Okay. So if you wa want to, in doing your board report, if you want this board report, if you want to make a correction, that would be the okay. appropriate time to make the correction. Thank you. Appreciate that. Tom. You're welcome. Other than that? Other than that, I move that we adopt the... Minutes of September 4th, 2013. I would second. It has been moved and seconded that we adopt the minutes of September 4th, 2013. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes for September 4th, 2013 are now adopted. Adoption of agenda. Are there any additions, corrections, or changes to the agenda? If there are not, I would uh, move to approve the agenda as it, as it stands. Second. It has been moved and seconded that we approve the adoption of uh, the board agenda as printed. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The uh, agenda is adopted as printed. Reports of student representatives. We'll begin with um, Ziffy Lewis, Mare Island Technology Academy. Um, so our API scores or EPI scores, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, API, uh, they came back and we've improved 77 points, which uh, still keeps us on the top. Um, we also have a junior held event uh, this Friday, um, it's the X Games Dodgeball. It is uh, at the American Canyon Recreational Center at 100 Benton Way. And um, to report back on Bingo Night, that was September 20th. We made over $1,800. And then um, we have also started Cassie testing yesterday. And my last thing is Technology Day, which is to show the awareness of our school and for workshops to be held from <coughs> Excel to maintaining a website will be held on October 12th or 19th. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? Thank you for that report. 
James Lynn, Jesse Bethel High School. And we did miss you guys at the last meeting. Oh, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, so we had, we had Club Rush last week from the 23rd to the 27th. We had 17 clubs participated. 17 clubs participated. And we spotlighted all the clubs on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And on Friday, we had signups. We also held a scavenger hunt on Friday. And the winner gets a free beanie. We had five winners to like encourage people to participate. And we had a, lo a lot of students signed up, and it was very, su very successful. And we'll be having our first club council meeting tomorrow. Uh, we also held an event, Senior Sunrise, last Wednesday on the 25th. It started at 6 a.m., and we had a scavenger hunt and breakfast. Uh, the purpose was for seniors to bond with each other, and we, had, we also had a huge turnout. It was really successful. And last, last week, we had honor roll. It was held, from four, it was held during fourth and sixth period. The fourth period, honor roll students were 3.0 to 3.74. And the sixth period, honor roll students were 3.75 and higher. And we had 306 students who had between 3.0 to 3.74. And we had 126, 3.75 and higher. Just a minute. Are there any questions? Is this from the last grading period, or is this from uh, spring 2012? Yeah, it was. OK. Thank you. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Frolon Savana? Yeah, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Frolon Savanya. OK. I am JSB president from Jesse Belt High School. And let me clarify that JSB stands for Jaguar Student Body. It was made, it was changed in our constitution uh, two weeks ago during our meeting. And I will conclude the Jesse Bethel High School board report. Um, we're gonna, gonna continue with Biomed. Parent meetings have begun for Biomed. Um, the Biomed Academy had named the cohorts according to the Greek alphabet to form identities for each class and foster a collegiate atmosphere. There is a student leadership cabinet that has been formed for the 2013-2014 school year. In the cabinet include a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, two class representatives per grade, and two event coordinators per grade, and also a leadership club. Two biomed teachers, Jackie Kearns and Shannon Freisinger, have been accepted into the University of California Curriculum Institute in November to design a new A through G course which will teach English from a medical slash health occupations perspective. The newly designed courses will be implement implemented next year and support the linked learning AB 790 grant. Also, Biomed is exploring the flipped classroom model for future instruction. The Law Academy will be holding a parent student meet and greet next Wednesday, 6.30. Uh, moving on to Ursula Film Festival, uh, Jesse Bethel High School won big at the, Jess at the Ursula Film Festival. The various categories that students won from Jesse Bethel include community, political, sports, arts, PSA, children, youth, and student filmmaker showcase. Upcoming. Homecoming for us is next week, and also Spirit Week is next week. The themes of each day include Plaid Day on Monday, Sports Day on Tuesday, Neon Day on Wednesday, Throwback Day on Thursday, and Class Colors on Friday, including the rally. The homecoming game is next Friday on October 11th, and the homecoming dance is on Saturday, October 12th. And also, a senior movie night is being planned on Monday, October 14th. And a Breast Cancer Awareness Week is also being planned for future. Are there any questions? Thank you for that report. Kayla Madruga 
Madriaga, Vallejo High School. Good evening, President Wilson, Vice President Ubaldi, Trustee Stewart, Mommerson, and Waterman, Superintendent Dr. Bishop, members of the Cabinet and citizens of Vallejo. My name is Kayla Marie Madriaga, representing Vallejo High School as its ASB Vice President, here to present you our school report. As usual, I'm going to begin with an update on past events. Our senior class had our first ever senior sunrise on Corpus Field on September 11, 2013. We had our first trip, our senior first trip, um, to Waterworld on that same day. We took 150 seniors to Waterworld and had about 200 students show up to Senior Sunrise. It was so fun, I would personally love to relive that day all over again. <laughs> <laughs> our rally committee successfully hosted our Welcome Back Rally on, on Friday, September 27, 2013. That included class cheers, classes going head to head in games such as freeze dance and tug of war. Um, and also, we had a special treat at our rally when our esteemed principal sitting over there, Mr. Clarence Isidore, and our instructional, excuse me, instructional reform coordinator, Ms. Madsen, actually dance battled for us in front of the whole entire student body. <laughs> and it was really fun. You can ask my peers over here at Vallejo High School representing. It was so, oh my goodness, it was, it was something. You guys should come to our next rally. It's, it's really fun. <laughs> Leadership held um, the homecoming royalty vote for the 2013 King and Queen in the Quad at lunch on Friday, September 27th, and on Monday, September 30th on the freshman campus. Our service committee, as well as the seniors, to tutored at Highland Elementary on October 1st, 2013. Also, each of our fall sports have officially begun their seasons, and we're looking forward to really, really great seasons for each of our teams. And lastly, for past events, Yesterday, um, some, a section, a small sectioned amount of leadership students, with myself included, actually were privileged to attend the CADA under the CASL, which is the California Association for Student Leaders. And there, pretty much, we got a chance to learn different kind of skills that we need or we could use as a leadership group to improve our student body as well as the leadership skills that we each possess as individual leaders. And um, we had ideas like new fundraising ideas and stuff like that. It was really a rewarding experience, and I hope our school gets to do that again in the future. And now for school activities for the month of October. Tonight, we will be having our first big fundraiser, which is our Applebee's fundraiser on Admiral Callahan. And we're going to be heading there after this. So if you guys want to join us, we would love to help you. And most importantly, to contribute to Vallejo High School's fundraiser. On Thursday, October 3rd, we will be having our annual club day in the quad at lunch where every club on campus gets a chance to broadcast their club that, you know, of course you want members, so that's what we're gonna do for that. And then on Friday, October 4th, our leadership will be super, super busy. It's our homecoming day, so we're gonna have our homecoming game, our homecoming rally, our homecoming parade, and revealing our homecoming royalty during the half tour coronation ceremony. And of course, just as always, we would love for you guys to come. It starts at seven, so we would love for you guys to be there. And then, on Saturday, October 5th, leadership will be hosting our homecoming dance from 8 o'clock p.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. in Batari Gym. For sports, our boys' soccer team has a game today versus Benicia at 3.30 p.m. Our girls' tennis has a game tomorrow versus Vanden at 3.30 p.m. Our cross country has their center meet on Corpus Field today at 3.30 p.m. And our volleyball team has a game tomorrow versus Benicia at 3.45 p.m. And then our water polo team has a game tomorrow as well versus Benicia at 3.30 p.m. And currently we were having, um, a s we're working on a lot of things like that we learned from the CASA. Um, we were working on Scary Movie Night because it's October. We're trying to work on that right now as a leadership. We're going to have it at the amphitheater. And we're working on a Halloween carnival. And we're also looking for like a lot of fundraisers like an auction. And I'll get you guys more information on that later on. And now for academics. Tuesday and Thursday we have had our CASI for the 10th and 10th graders and 12th and 11th that haven't um, passed it yet. Uh, 180 students came on Tuesday to take it and Wednesday 150 students and Ms. Madsen said they were really serious and well behaved and they we have a good chance at a lot of them passing so we're really excited about that. Um, our district-wide assessments are next uh, week for English and math. Next Friday, October 11th, is the end of quarter one. It's really fast, I can't believe it, but yeah, it's the end of quarter one. And um, lastly, the SATs are going to be hosted at Vallejo High School this Saturday, October 5th. And now for gifts. Can I have my people come over here? Because you know how much I love to give you guys gifts. Um, it is and October, always, yes. And I got you guys cute little, 
I think those are scarecrows. <laughs> and um, I just wanted you guys to be festive for this month. <laughs> so I'm going to have them pass that out. Thank you. I'm sad Mrs. Waterman isn't here today. I always yes. love her reaction when I give her gifts. But anyway. <laughs> okay, and in, this is my conclusion. Thank you guys for listening to what's going on at Vallejo High School. If there's any comments, questions, or concerns, I'll be more than happy to answer. Yes, I do have a question. The uh, leadership conference that mm -hmm. you received, ye that you um, attended yesterday, uh, have you been in leadership more than this year, or is this your first year? I have been in leadership since the second semester of my freshman year. So is this unusual for you to go to uh, this conference, or have you been before? Uh, it's the first time that our school actually went. We don't know if our previous activities director had knowledge of it, but mm -hmm. our new activities director did, and she took the initiative and planned it and have had nine, um, all of our chairs and some of our underclassmen that are going to step up and be like our liaisons for the committee, mm -hmm. they took us there. Okay, and it was really, good. really fun. Very <laughs> good. Um, and um, is this a one-time thing, or will there be follow-up training? It's once a year. So then the next one, it's a retreat kind of thing. And so it's going to be next year again. And Miss Adams, our activities director, is going to do it annually. Mm -hmm. I had the pleasure of visiting um, this class very early in the morning. She did. <laughs> we were so thankful for it. <laughs> very early in the morning. And I could not believe how uh, the room was packed. Uh, the students come that early in the morning. And it's a great class. And I'm just glad that you guys are having the opportunity to um, explore new uh, venues and ideas and get more training. And um, uh, great job. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Director Mumson. Uh, once again, what is the date uh, for the homecoming? It's this Friday, October 4th. This Friday? Yes, Thank sir. You. Uh, Director Uvalde. What is your name again? Kayla. Kayla. Thank you, Kayla. Outstanding report. Thank you so much. Really. I appreciate it. And the achievements? have been numerous, and that is great. And so is commend uh, uh, both uh, Jesse Bethel and yeah. MIT mm -hmm. very much. And uh, that's the kind of uh, report that we'd really, really like to hear. Mm -hmm. And that way, the community, because this is live. Mm -hmm. You're on TV right now, and this is the kind of things. Oh, hello. hello. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this, is, this is the kind of, kind of things that we need, the community need to hear. <laughs> for an outstanding job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kayla. And uh, the cross-country meet uh, was held at Hans Park. Oh, it was? Yeah. My uh, bad. Cross-country generally Okay, is I was outdated just, just okay. this one time. It won't happen okay. again. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, no problem. Just in case people want to come. Uh, yeah, it already started, so yes. probably almost done. But there will be fr future summer yes, meets. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I think both Bethel and Vallejo runs their meets at mm -hmm. Hans Park. So it is something that you want to participate in. Yeah. Is that it? Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Everyone did a great job, and we really appreciate Bethel, Mare Island, and Vallejo. Great job. We love to showcase our students, because this is what it's all about. And all three schools are doing some great things and have had a great opening of the school year. We're proud of all of you guys. Thank you. At this time, staff reports. Dr. Bishop. Um, President Wilson, we all have two um, staff reports this evening. We thought um, in the interest of some of the media regarding testing irregularities, we would have Mr. Cheap give a brief summary of what that is and is not. And then after that, um, Mr. Jordan has um, some introductions that he'd like to make to the board as well. Thank you. Good evening, board members. Good evening. President Wilson. Um, yes, I'm here. Um, I guess I, I didn't see it in the paper uh, mm -hmm. for some unfortunate reason. I didn't get my paper for four days, so I didn't see the article until I read That'll it today. Pay the bill, Mike. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing you. I thought I did. But um, I know what it's about. Uh, there was um, 
and I'm not sure if you had some questions. There was an irregularity at Vallejo High School on our star testing. Um, as it said in the paper, which I read today about it, uh, what it says in the paper is what was put on the irregularity report. Um, I'm not sure where you want to go with this, but there was an incident there where the give a brief overview of the state what you sent me the summary that you sent me around oh, okay. state irregularities and then um, because based on the fact that this is a personnel matter there's some things we can't discuss so just an overview sure. thank you All right. um, testing irregularities are come in three different bunches for the state for the standardized testing and reporting program which is the star program they talk about um, Testing irregularities, which talk about discussing questions with the students beforehand, uh, providing instructions during the test that are inappropriate, giving student answers, so forth. Um, the other one is inappropriate test preparation. In other words, practicing with test items that might have been on the test in previous times, um, only testing or only doing preparation based on just what's on the test. Those are what the state considers inappropriate test preparations. And then there's security breaches, where the um, validity of the test is in danger of not being valid anymore. Okay, and that might mean copying tests, uh, developing a scoring key, allowing students to take the test in different rooms or not in the procedure that was written. So when those things happen, the school reports that to me, or if something happens in school, they report it to me. I have my responsibility to talk with the California Department of Education and talk with them about whether that's a irregularity that I'd have to report to the state. And that's what happened here. It got reported to me. I checked with the state. The state said, yeah, you better send that up. And there's a report um, that asks things like, what subject was it? How many kids were involved? And what was the basis for it? And what, what happened, basically? So in our case, um, this was a teacher who used a strategy that he had used before um, in classes, but it was not appropriate for testing time during this test. Um, it had nothing to do with giving answers or uh, helping the kids in any way. It was exactly what it said basically in the paper. It was a way of just checking. The kid had a way of keeping track of what answers they knew, which answers they didn't know, and what questions they had trouble on. And that in the eyes of the CDE, that was an inappropriate use of that. But there was no, I want to lay to rest, there was no help of the students. They didn't go back. There was no cheating in that sense of cheating. They all had their normal scores. But because there was a certain amount of kids that were in the class that this happened, and it became more than 5% of the total amount of kids who were tested, the CDE took the step as of disallowing the API score or ABI score. So for the next this year we don't get one for Vallejo High School. And as you know probably by now things are changing for the future so there won't be other APIs for future years. Any uh, questions? Quest questions by the board? I do want to um, commend administration for having the ethics to report. Um, uh, and uh, I appreciate the fact that um, there is re reporting and at least to check in, see whether um, there's a problem because it's teaching our children um, that ethical behavior is important. Certainly, I do not like the consequences. In no way po possible do I like the consequences. But I thank the administration and for whomever was proctor in the test who made the first report to have that courage to do the right thing. And um, I do ask one thing, that when we have the meeting at Vallejo High School, the follow-up to the grand jury. I would like for this item, because there will be many parents there from Vallejo High School, to be on the agenda. And I want an inclusion of what this means if there is a financial impact. 
and I believe that there may be. Um, so, Director Mumson? I have a question. Was this merely a case of, of um, the person administering the test not clear on what the guidelines were? In my opinion, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, my question, my follow up to that is if the per why wouldn't the person know what the guidelines were? So the process is um, every, uh, that's a good question. And so let me just say that every teacher, everybody who's going to administer the test gets a training um, and then signs an affidavit. So every teacher system-wide uh, viewed the video and um, Mr. Cheap has to track that, provides that training to the testing coordinator the video is viewed and then the testing affidavit is signed. And the signing of that tef testing affidavit indicates that you understand um, all of the uh, efforts around standardized testing. Standardized testing means that across this state, every teacher has to administer the test the same way. And so every teacher across the state, not only just in Vallejo, but across the state, receives that information and then signs that they understand it, President Wilson. Director Stewart. Thank you. Following up on the comments of uh, Raymond here, I'm thinking, you know, we're in a situation where we're giving a standardized test, and, you know, how can this possibly be a learning moment for um, what was done wrong and what you can and cannot do beyond what a guideline says? I mean, uh, knowing how cut and dry that is the the regulation of the test or whether or not there is some room for utilizing it as a either a tool or as a, a you know just it's not even worth it in this case um, that's that's the gray area I'm hoping we can find um, you know s where we can move forward from this and not have something like this either happen again or what we can you know learn to help better prepare our staff in the future um, related to what you had to uh, say uh, President Wilson uh, I couldn't be happier that we followed through and handled this in the proper way. Whether it was very, very minor or not, you know, there was, there's a protocol in place for a reason. And if there's consequences, that's unfortunate, but the fact that we're modeling the proper behavior in this situation, I, I wanted to echo as I'm glad that we're following that as um, the example. But again, with what I you know stated earlier, I, I'm I'm hoping that there's some form of um, teaching moment here, where we're actually able to take something away from the situation. I know it's difficult under the circumstances, um, but if we are in some way, shape, or form able to gain some knowledge of how best to utilize um, testing as a tool moving forward, beyond just you know, hey, we are comparing ourselves, you know statewide that I would hope we would be able to figure that out in this process I know but again I know that's a difficult way to you know move at this stage of the game but thank you director Ubaldi I read the article but uh, I don't recall <coughs> the specific consequences that you're you're fearful of uh, President Wilson um, is there some way we that, that you could what, what are those consequences? Well, how would it impact, you, you spoke about grant or money, and how does it impact the student themselves directly? Student-wise, excuse me, student-wise it doesn't impact them. All, even if the students, the students in that teacher's class all got reports just like every other student did. It doesn't affect them in any way because it didn't concern itself with any of their answers on the test report. So. That was fine. In the sense, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, Ms. Wilson is talking about if we use data for getting grants or other kinds of, of money income, then we wouldn't have that data to give, I think is if I'm mm -hmm. worried about that part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that all depends on, of course, the grant, the, the people you're talking with or whatever and why. So I, if that's the direction we're going, yes, yes, we do not have that data to give somebody and of course, that would make it, you know, people would ask why and we'd have to explain and so Thank forth. You. 
and I think that's um, an important piece. Yes. And um, as I said, I'm hoping that uh, a brief report mm -hmm. will be included in our October meeting at Vallejo High School with the grand jury report. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, guys. Enjoy Applebee's. <laughs> Do we have a community forum? Community forum? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm moving ahead. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, President Wilson, uh, Vice President Ubaldi, uh, Trustee Stewart, and Trustee Munson, and Dr. Ramona Bishop. Um, this item, um, again, this is sort of exciting uh, uh, thing that I want to bring to your attention, but I'm going to warn you that I'm going to need uh, uh, the Board of Trustees to volunteer at the end of this uh, uh, conversation. International Walk to School Day 2013 is coming up on October 9th. We have, uh, this is um, uh, an event that promotes walking and bicycling, several uh, reasons why this is important. Physical activities, uh, teaching uh, safe pedestrian uh, walking skills to students, the awareness, uh, the concerns of the environment, uh, reducing traffic congestion, pollution, and the speed around our schools. Also, um, it's an opportunity at this moment in time for uh, the communi community leaders and parents to, uh, and the children to participate. So there's four schools, um, and well actually this is a, a program that is um, basically ran by the Solano uh, Transporta Transportation Authority, known as STA. We have um, uh, STA, we have a program that's called Safe Routes to School, which is the uh, acronym is SR2S program, which is coordinating this uh, event. And there are 19 schools that have been identified in Solano County, and four of those schools are here in Vallejo. And what we're looking at is, uh, or what they're looking at, is some volunteers to um, walk to school at four of our schools. The schools are, um, we have Franklin Middle School, we have um, Lincoln, and we have Highland, as well as Dan Minnie. Uh, another note here is at Franklin, we have a 7.45 a.m. start time. <laughs> and Lincoln, we have an 8 a.m. start time. And we have Highland at an 8.50 start time. And we have a Dan Mini at 9 a.m. President Wilson start time. That's so uh, <laughs> those, those are the times. So again, um, not to put you on the spot, but this is October 9th, and I thought this would be the best opportunity to sort of maybe get a, uh, a signal of some sort so I can you know, give uh, uh, the coordinator some information. Do we have any volunteers? Is it appropriate at this time, President Wilson, to say that, or do you want to get back to me? <laughs> okay. Are there volunteers from the board? Director Gibaldi? Yeah, I'll take the 8.50 a.m. Okay. That's close to 9 o'clock. Yeah, 8.50 is Highland. <coughs> Correct. My wife's former school, so she'll probably volunteer with me also. Right, and we'll get you the information exactly how that all works, okay? Thank you. Uh, nine o'clock is appropriate for me. Can nine they have o'clock is Dan Minnie. Can they have a late start day that day? <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> okay, Dan Minnie. Uh, we have Lincoln at eight o'clock. And by the way, I think uh, there's, I think the mayor is at the Franklin one at 745. So, um, you know, you could have coffee as you walk. We did the, we did the, uh, uh, the bus, I guess you call it uh, walking school bus, a real fun activity, and we did that at Lincoln, so that's a good run. Any more volunteers going once? <laughs> Director Mumson? How, how soon do you need to know? 
Oh, you just you know, just let me know before that. I I'll just let uh, before the ninth, okay. uh, so I get you information so that we can you know sort of get a little bit of uh, maybe some press around it as well. Okay, doc. Okay. Is so this, is this the kind where you just have a photo ops and then you can leave? <laughs> Do we have to actually walk? No, I'm joking. <laughs> right. Okay, so thank you for that. We'll uh, take note of that. Um, at the last board meeting, there's an, inform there's an action item later on in the, in the agenda, but I thought that um, this would be appropriate time. So um, the presenters, actually not even presenters, just um, some individuals that, that are part of this program, which is um, actually the DRC uh, agenda, which was the daily reporting um, center that's housed at the Franklin, I mean at the uh, at the Farragut uh, school site known as a VA um, school site. There's a program there that has been going on for over 14 years taking care of our students. And what happened was at the last meeting, uh, President Wilson asked a question regarding their, um, you know, are these our students? And I all our students, and that was the 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 word that I was uh, toggling with, is that yes, all our students are um, are the ones that are in this program. This the program um, directly supports um, the um, uh, the uh, uh, um, um, the program there at Vallejo um, Educational Academy. So with that, um, again, these are. Um, these are s all students that are actually trans tra they're actually transport door to door, so there's no real walking through anywhere. They're they're actually uh, um, bused or um, or traveled by uh, their parents. There is um, um, a, a tremendous amount of support there at the school site, which is has to do with the probation and the DRC. Uh, this evening, I have I mean this afternoon this evening we have uh, some rep uh, some. Uh, staff as well as the chief operation off uh, leader of the community alternative uh, school uh, program His name is Ken uh, Borick for you wants to stand I, I don't think you're gonna be one of the speakers but you can stand um, he is the chief operation officer for the program uh, we have um, Yvonne uh, Malavi uh, who is the uh, 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 daily reporting center and who is going to be um, uh, is also is on site on site there and I believe uh, Lisa Warbell is going to be the uh, the probation um, portion of it. And I think she's going to be, who's going to be speaking? Uh, you're going to speak to it? So I just wanted to, you know, I really have to appreciate their time because when it came up, it was just <coughs> a, sort of a really good opportunity. A lot of these things that we have going on in the, in the district um, have been going on for quite some time, but they're not really recognizing how much worth they are. So when I made a call out there, um, or actually the facilities department made a call, um, they just quickly came to the bat and says, you know, let's let's just say a little bit about this because you know, it's 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 a wonderful program. So not much time, but Lisa, you want to come on up and say a little bit about um, the DRS, uh, the probation and the program over there, and you can go right to the mic up there. Yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm Lisa Womble. I am the Probation Services Manager. I am assigned to the Vallejo office, and I manage both the adult and the juvenile divisions out of that office. Um, LCA has been a contracted um, agency. They have been providing services for our youth that are referred to the Day Reporting Center. Uh, they've been providing services for us for 12 plus years. They've done a good job in helping monitor our kids. They do um, transport them from school to the day reporting center. They provide services, um, counseling, treatment, um, tutoring. Uh, they feed them. They provide a myriad of services basically to help our youth get back on track and stay positive in the community. And hopefully it will divert them from further issues. Thank you. Is there Thank any? Thank you. Go ahead. Any other questions from the board? Okay. All right. Thank you. Later on in the item, you'll be able to. There's an action item in there. So again, I want to thank all three of you for your time, and uh, we'll be seeing at the site. Okay. Thank you. I do have one last one that I just wanted to throw in. I did not review this with Dr. Bishop, but I wanted to say it because it was it happened pretty quickly, 
and it has to do with our district office as far as our access points. We um, uh, took a, we've been on this for quite some time, but it was, um, I made a decision as we were getting uh, close to settling down uh, uh, as school started up is to, is to uh, contr basically control like we do at our school sites uh, access points. And we have, um, this building was designed as an ac access point. You would say, why not in the front of, this, of the building? It's in the rear. This is a historical building, and what happens is that a lot of what you do, with, as you know, with all public buildings, you have to have equal access to, uh, they call the ADA, American Disabilities Act, so we have handicap accessibility. So in order to do that, um, the ramping design system that would be appropriate for the school was in the back side. So that ended, and you have to, and that has to be your main entrance point. That has to be equal access for everybody. So that's the reason why that's the main entrance. That's why it has a sign back there. That's why the parking's back there. That's come the handicap stuff's back there. And that's come the elevators where it's at. It's all circled around that equal access. So with that being said, um, we, at initially when we first started, we had all our doors pretty much locked. Uh, but now, um, and we started gotten, gotten away from that because of, uh, we're still in motion, a lot of movement. But anyway, there are 12 access points in this building. So now we got it down to only one access point. There's signs at every one of the at doors. There's going to be another sign put out there for uh, Spanish speaking uh, uh, individuals so that they will also see that. There's a map that says this is where you're at. We'll clean it up a little bit more so it's more um, even as, it, as we work it out. But as you go around to that access point, um, there's a, another door that's open for just child development. And so there's a sign there that basically says that's not the main entrance. That's just for child development only. Everybody comes in and signs. The entire district knows if you do not have a badge or uh, some kind of identification on you, you will have to sign in. And then, just as we do at the schools, and, uh, but if you have a badge, you, you, know, you, you have access right now. Later on, we're going to even refine that more as we work on the school sites more on how we do more electronic stuff. So anyway, during board meeting evenings, this door um, on the north end will be open as far as, as, as well as the front door. So there's that public access. But every other door in this building is, is, is locked from the, from the outside. You can get an exit at any given time. So I just wanted to put that out there because I also, also want to just thank everybody for uh, uh, the positive rec uh, receiving it. Um, it there, is, um, there was really no pushback, just some clarification about what the front door was and those kinds of things. So again, I want to thank everybody uh, for uh, uh, embracing that. Thank you. Thank you. And I think it's very safety is always very important to us. Um, in all of our buildings. And so I appreciate uh, the proactive approach that has been taken with this particular item. Does that conclude the staff report? Okay. At this time, we'll have community uh, forum and um, Mike Rhodes. Mike. Oh, okay. I can't see you with my glasses on. <laughs> President Wilson, Trustees Ubaldi, Stewart, and Mumson. Sorry, Trustee Waterman's not here. Superintendent Bishop, and of course, Patty. Nobody's mentioned Patty tonight. Thank you for filling in tonight. Um, as for uh, Mr. Jordan's statement about the security here for maintenance, for myself, I noticed when I got my new badge, they only had lanyards. Well, when you're operating equipment, it can grab and hurt you. I found this old clip that I have. I was wondering maybe if we could get some of those so um, people don't have to wear something around their neck. Anyway, um, I'm here tonight. Oh, first of all, I'm sorry. Um, parts of this speech are from other speeches in the last two times that I spoke because it seems like the message isn't getting across. So I'm going to go ahead and just read that and then I've added some more in from a little more current material. I'm here tonight to ask for the board's help. We're losing people. When we, when we passed Prop 30, I thought it was a good thing, like most people. Our members right now feel they are not valued. 
definitely not the way they should be. When we, we would like you to send a message to Dr. Bishop. Um, I feel that our members should be compensated for all the years that we have went without. I'm asking you to help our members realize that value. I would like you to send a message to them so they realize that, that without them, this community and its schools could not function. We have not had a raise in many years, I believe since 08. In fact, with the health care going up, we have taken the amount, what amounts to pay cuts, and it will be going up again in December. So while our pay goes down, everything else goes up. We cannot continue to lose money. Some of our members are paying to work, or will be paying to work, while the rest of us have chosen between bread for our children and gas for our vehicles so we can get to work. A family now pays $750 for a family health and welfare for our portion, and it's going to go up, I heard, on about $200 or 160 somewhere between 160 and 200 um, I know our members that worked up the ranks, in fact, there's one here tonight, um, and he makes less money now than he did several years ago. So um, I think that's just wrong. So I'm asking to instruct Dr. Bishop to instruct her representatives to show our members their worth and provide them with proof that they are valued. Don't come to the table and cut. Well, um, that's already happened. We went to the table Monday and it was cut, cut, cut. So um, that part of the speech doesn't work. Uh, we helped work with this district to get local control back. We will continue to work with this district, but this cannot be a one-way street. I'm sure you realize that the classified workers see and interact with more children in this community than any other employee in the district. We're the first and last to see them. The custodians, the office, they're the first to see them. When they get off the bus, the bus driver is the last one to see them. We're all educators, so we would like to be treated as such. My team was shocked when we got the district's proposal. They want to cut or weaken at least seven or eight parts of our contract. No mention of a raise, no mention of any health and welfare, except for the fact they said that um, with the Affordable Care Act that they weren't quite sure where everything was going to fall. So that was mentioned. This district laid off in the worst case scenario this last year, and it didn't happen. We got Prop 30 passed, the economy starting to return. A lot of our members did not get their jobs back. Special Ed lost three Secretary Twos. You guys had to vote for that, that deep cut in there. They have not got any back. We've got two ladies up there that are working themselves to death, and I'd like to thank Paula and Judy for working to try and keep the special ed department above water. The district has been using subs all over the place. They're not hiring our members back. And then we get what we felt to was a slap in the face. It really, it, it, our members were speechless. We didn't respond because it probably would have been a total anger. So if I seem angry now, I'm calm compared to how I felt in that room. We've bargained in good faith. Always, in order to expedite a job description change for the academic support providers, which goes along with the superintendent's plans, um, we changed our meetings and, and put the hurry on getting this thing approved so it could be done, implemented before the school year had ended so we can get to have things cohesive. Um, so, you know, some of our members are working two and three jobs. They can't come to these meetings. They can't come to my chapter meetings because they're, they're working. Uh, I have people begging me to, for help on the wages, that we could get a raise, a fair raise, health and welfare. Uh, it's just, I hear it all the time. People are saying, one lady says she makes $800 a month. You just heard me say the health and welfare is 750 So she said pretty soon she's going to be giving the district money so she can come to work. So I know it's bad all over. But um, our members need to believe, 
that you're going to give them what is due to them, basically. Um, a couple of cases here locally, Solano uh, County gave their employees a 5% raise. Benicia got a 4% raise. And even BART, who's talking about strike, has offered their people a 10% raise. Now, they turned it down. I'm not sure why, but that's their choice. So I'm here tonight to ask for your help. If anybody would like to contact me, I'm going to give all the board members my card. I probably have done it a million times, but I just want to make sure that you have that information. You can call me personally, and we can talk. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. B.A. Groves. Good evening to the board. Directors Raymond Victor, Ward A. Stewart, Dr. Tony Ubaldi, President Hazel Wilson, and Superintendent Ramona Bishop. I'm coming here tonight with um, a few concerns. First of all, before I begin, I want to thank the board and the district for really doing the best you can with all that you have. But I want to edit that by also saying that as a community member, and I'm representing my founded organization, which is called Civil Liberties Action Coalition NorCal. And I just realized last year that my voice and the organization is growing, but my voice is very, very important because we still have a lot of community members in this city who are very intimidated by policy, whether it's through the city of Vallejo or through the school board. My concern tonight is a voice that's representing a lot of parents who are, who are quite afraid to be here tonight. Um, thank you, Dr. Bishop, for our meeting on Monday. I'm the kind of person, you know, I like to deal with issues straight hand, get the facts before I go further. And I met with Dr. Bishop this Monday because I wanted to be certain that she was aware of the letter that I'm speaking on, and she was. Thank you, Dr. Ubaldi, for the few minutes I had with you yesterday. I asked Dr. Ubaldi, was he familiar with this letter? He said no. So I'm assuming that the entire school board here is unaware of the letter that I'm getting ready to share with you. Transitional kindergartners, kindergartners, and at least first graders in this district received a letter from the district attorney's office, Fairfields, California, Solano County, and the only name that was signed on that letter was Dr. Bishop. Well, I have a problem with the board not representing what Dr. Bishop signs, because that lets me know that you're unaware of the circumstance. I thought that the board hired Dr. Bishop I didn't believe it was reversed, and I'm still hoping that you are her boss. The letter stated that uh, the real problem with the letter is that the letter was addressed to the children, and then it goes on to say parent guardian. First of all, a child cannot respond to a letter from the district attorney's office. Secondly, what right does this school board have to give the district attorney's office personal information from school records. That's my concern. Secondly, why would the school board in a letter state penal code 270, which reads, chronically truant children, parent guardian, if you fail to supervise pupil or child age years or more, I'm sorry, age six years or more, who is in any grade K through eight, and who is subject to compulsory full-time education or compulsory continuation education, and who is a chronic truant as in Ed Code Section 48236.3, well, first of all, children who are under six receive this letter. To me, that is a legal issue that I really want the school board to address. The penal code that was addressed in the letter is for age six and above. Why are four-year-olds, why are five-year-olds receiving a letter addressed in their name 
with an address, dear parent, dear guardian, and they are not the parent or the guardian of themselves. I'm very concerned about that. Joseph Crines, our chief of police, Dr. Bishop, Judge Frakia, probation officer Chris Hansen, on and on, all of these great top probation public defender names are the people whose names are on this letter. And every parent I spoke to is intimidated beyond reproach. Now here's what I want to ask you. Uh, the children of parents who are pretty much millennials in our community, millennials aren't like my generation. I'm a boomer. I'm proud of it. But I'm a boomer who's acting like a millennial right now because I'm jumping outside of the box of what's expected of me. My children are millennials, and here's what they're deciding to do about this problem. Get ready. I would ask your financial director, add up all of the children who receive the letter, times the ADA that you would lose for a week. Whatever that amount is, that's what you're getting ready to lose because they're working out a plan. And if those parents don't get apologies, if those parents aren't provided policy that the district is in their right mind to do what happened, maybe they'll change their minds. But I just want to come before you tonight because I'm very concerned. I feel that a breach of the confidentiality of parents, students, and why am I here? I'm a grandparent who's on an emergency card. So I feel as though I have every right to talk about this because my name is probably in Fairfield too. And I would like to know, one, how many students receive the letter? Number two, what authority does this district have to provide this information to the district attorney's office in Fairfield? Because the way the young people I'm talking to now feel about it, they're going, wow, my child hasn't even done anything. And they're already in the database of the district attorney's office? What is this a conspiracy to tag them from kindergarten so that by the time they're 18, everybody, including the police chief and the public defender and the prosecutor, will know who to incarcerate like they do right now with their racial profiling of our 18-year-olds and over? That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments? Um, Rosemary... Dias. Rosemary, I'm sorry. Good, good evening. Good evening, Dr. Bishop, President Wilson, Dr. Ubaldi, Member Stewart, and Mr. M Mr. Moms, Member, I'm excuse me, Member Momsen. My name is Rosemary Diaz, and um, I represent the Multimedia Academy at, at Bethel High School. And um, this evening, um, by uh, Dr. Ubaldi's request, um, we just wanted to show off some of our winners of the Ursula Film Festival. Um, keep in mind that most of our winners uh, that evening were, senior, or were seniors, and so they moved on. Um, I left messages, phone calls, made phone calls everywhere, so I wasn't sure who was going to be able to make it tonight. So, but I do want to show off two of our students who were able to make it. And both of these young gentlemen are uh, now 10th uh, graders. And I am proud, very proud to have them involved in our Multimedia Academy because last year as ninth graders, as you all know, they're in the grade nine community. So they were, they were not uh, fully invested into uh, any academy. But these two gentlemen are, I'm very proud to announce that they're involved in the Multimedia Academy and they're just flying, they're just doing wonderfully. So I'd like to introduce Mr. Joshua De La Cruz. Go ahead and stand up. And. and Skylar Edwinson, and um, guys come over here. So um, I'd like to, to uh, can you tell a little bit about your project, what you guys did, what your topic was about, and what you put together? We, uh, we made a project about the anti-bullying, so Oh, we made a video about a kid who <coughs> goes to school. He got picked <coughs> on by another kid. They were starting fighting uh, outside in the blacktop. And then 
on the also part of the video we put the two kid the kids or the bullies who were picking on the kid went to the bathroom and then we, uh, they pick a lighter they use a lighter on him because they were about to kill him mm -hmm. the reason why we made it because it's a it's a warning to all that we had to stop bullying so that could never happen to people ever again Uh, it was like to show that like how many like like how many deaths bullying can cause I guess so that is a uh, very impressive and how long is the video? It's about uh, two minutes. It's about yeah. two minutes. I yeah. hope at some point in time that uh, we can see the video mm -hmm. and perhaps uh, it can be a tool used throughout the uh, district um, uh, as one of our pro own produced uh, mm -hmm. uh, anti-bullying mm -hmm. because we certainly support the concept. Um, we certainly support anti-bullying and we're very proud of you two, young men, for um, producing it. And I understand that you received an award at the Ursula Award Ceremony for this dynamic uh, video. Mm -hmm. They, um, yeah. So we've got um, we've got also 11th graders who've also won awards for their videos, and mm -hmm. uh, not to mention the 12th graders, as I said earlier. Um, but we've had a variety, a big variety of types of media that, that the students produced, from animations uh, to instructional videos, how to do things, um, to anti-bullying. So we had a, a pretty good range of topics. That, and most of the time, the kids picked their own, um, they picked their own topic, and they definitely picked their own storyline, how they wanted to present it. Mm -hmm. So um, we're very proud of all of them for the work that they did. Mm -hmm. well, we s now, we started with the... Uh Ursula Awards, and I guess it'll, it'll be the Academy for you guys next. <laughs> I just really want to give Rosemarie Diaz a round of applause for her work. Mm -hmm. She submitted her team, the Multimedia Academy, plus the uh, ninth graders who were interested, submitted 33 videos. 23 made the cut, and I believe it was six categories I got to walk up and say thank you. Um, it was a wonderful evening, um, and our kids did an excellent job, but that's definitely under the guidance of our academy lead, Rosemarie Diaz, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Uvaldi? I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if the young men could come up again, please. Both of you. <laughs> I can tell by the fact that uh, you're not very verbal, <laughs> that it's you, the film is your way of communicating. And obviously, you did an excellent job. Uh, were you both present at the event? Yeah. Okay. I just want to please come up to the podium. I just want to let you know, you, you know, your principal is a very tall lady, right? <laughs> but you, sh you should have seen her that night. She was twice as tall receiving those awards on your behalf. And she was like a very proud mother. And you ought to really thank her for picking up your your uh, your trophies and wh so what are you doing with your trophies now you still have them yeah <laughs> okay. Okay, oh Linda. i see okay linda you're gonna have to give them up <laughs> there is a trophy place on, on on you have that information that you can have your your name put on a trophy 
on the North Bay Awards on Tennessee Street near Monterey. So please go there and just present your trophy and they will put your name on it, okay? Congratulations and I look forward to seeing you again next year. And Madam President, I just want to thank uh, our Principal Kingston and Teacher Rosemary for the years for bringing the kids and acknowledging them this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. That concludes our community forum. I think I've, everyone who had a card, I think they've spoken. Did anybody, did I miss anybody? I guess not, okay. Now we report to board members. Director Mumpson. Um, I have nothing actually to report, uh, except my son is doing fine in college. <laughs> He's happy. He's not even homesick, which kind of bothers me. <laughs> He's having a good time. <laughs> so he's enjoying himself. Director Stewart. I do have, but I do have some a question oh, though. Yes. Uh, uh, before we get on to Director Stewart, um, I was wondering where we're at with with um, the class sizes and overage, overages. If uh, <coughs> Dr. Bishop would like to comment on that, or somebody. Good evening. At this time, um, we're still gathering information from our um, school sites, our secondary sites that were most impacted, um, specifically our high schools and our middle schools. Um, and so I'll be able to have more specific information about you after, about that information after I've had time to go through. I've just started receiving the information from the sites this afternoon. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. When should we expect uh, a report? So I will have information for you um, sooner than later. Um, I'm going to be connecting with Dr. Bishop and reviewing what's been submitted, and then we'll have adequate information that we are accurate information that we can then disseminate to everyone. Um, we haven't had a chance to go through the information and look at where we are. We like to, in our process of addressing overages, for the purpose of having a common message and, and an understanding, we like to have time to review where we are. We've um, given specific directives to some of our sites to balance and to make um, appropriate changes so that we have our numbers at the right place. And so we're still working on that because we've had a lot of changes, including some staffing challenges that we're still working on. And we're addressing those issues and then we will review everything with Dr. Bishop. So I'm hopefully within the next 24 hours, I'll have something for Dr. Bishop. Okay. So we may have something in our Friday. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Director Stewart. Thank you. I joined uh, Mr. Jordan and Dr. Ubaldi at uh, the city's interagency committee meeting this past week. And uh, we have an item on this evening's agenda related to that uh, that we will be speaking on. <laughs> or, okay, Mel. Um, uh, related to the question that was brought up by um, Trustee Mumpson, I'm also curious about staffing related to our substitutes and um, some of the measures we might be able to take to um, take a look at how we support that. And if we could speak to that as well. So there are a couple of things that are going on right now specifically as it relates to staffing. Um, I am happy to report that we have filled quite a few more vacancies. Um, we're down to three vacancies at our elementary sites. I um, mean, I think the last board meeting we had 12. Um, and we also have been filling some of our secondary positions as well. Some of the challenges that we're having, just being very transparent, is that we allowed um, a segment of our population of subs to perform other duties. 
So that has been a challenge because they're both subs and they're self-testers. We're talking about 27, 28 employees. So that's impacted our sub population. We continue to hire subs, but we've also had eight of our subs that we've hired that we've actually hired into teaching positions. So as we're bringing on more people and we're being impacted by the self-testing issue, we also are um, finding that we're having sub fatigue. So with some of our subs who have been with us since the first day of school, they've already been in a site for almost 30 days or at 30 days, so it's getting to the place where maybe they're not as likely to accept an assignment, at least on a Monday or a Friday. So every week, every Friday, I interview candidates and we're hiring subs. We have a lot of really great new subs coming on board, but the hiring process involves TB testing, fingerprinting, getting appropriate uh, credentials. There's a permit that has to be secured. So it's not any type of hiring. It's not a process that happens overnight. It takes time. And so sometimes it gets delayed. If there's a delay in the prints, we also experienced um, about a month ago a shortage in the TB um, test. So we couldn't send potential employees to places to get TB, uh, to get tested because they were out of virals. There was a shortage nationwide. So we're, we've been kind of dealing with, you know, little things that have impacted where we are as it relates to staffing. We, we move 10 steps forward and then something will happen and we'll have to take a few steps back. But we are anxiously working every day to fill the vacancies to hire teachers that are fully credentialed as well as hire subs. And we have quite a few credentialed subs now. And I just think that based on all the data, just looking at it daily, because I'm, I'm on it daily, that if we're just, if we continue to bring people aboard and we continue to fill the vacancies, we will have less of a need for our sub pool. And of course, by November 1st, we'll also have those 28 cell testers back that will also assist us and we'll continue to hire more subs as we go along. So there may be a perception or feeling that there's a sub shortage or that there are too many subs, but a lot of the vacancies have been filled. We're just waiting for prints to clear. We're waiting for the hiring process to conclude so that teachers can start. And can I just w add one more thing um, to what Ms. Patrick explained very clearly? Um, our principals are being very picky. Oh, yes. <laughs> and so whereas it seems like it's taking us forever, it's really a good forever because at the end of the day, we're getting very quality candidates. So thank you for sending them lots of options so they can select. You're welcome. And, and thank you for that update. I, I think it would be useful. Um, it's been on a few of our radars that we receive an update um, in whatever is the most appropriate means. Um, whether it's as part of the personnel discussion <coughs> item on the agenda or some other way um, moving forward. Absolutely. Thank you. Director Ubaldi. Before I start on uh, my main uh, uh, report, I, I want to follow up on uh, Trustee Momsen and uh, Stewart's concern because I too have gotten reports a particular report that there are three special ed teachers that that we need to <laughs> hire and that the special ed classes are impacted and I assume that's part of your report that you you just alluded to that is correct we're working mm -hmm. closely with the director of the special ed department to fill the vacancies um, I do have to note that these are hard to fill positions and so we are, are exhausting every possibility. We're working with colleges and universities and credentialing programs. We're considering interns for um, positions as well as posting and advertising, calling, putting fillers out. We're doing everything possible to recruit members to fill these vacancies. Thank you. Appreciate that, Ms. Patrick. On September 21st was the Ursula Awards, and I want to give a big shout out and to, to Dr. Bishop for doing such a marvelous job as co MC that evening. And I want to copy uh, Kayla's comment about 
describing her teacher, uh, Ms. Matson, that she said she was something. I would like to say that my, my superintendent, she was something to behold that evening. <laughs> so I just want to, to really, a big shout out for you and, and for really thank, uh, helping me out with, with that evening because I, I was all over the place and there were stuff that I should be doing and you, you helped me through that and I'm very grateful to you. Uh, and to, to see the, both our major schools principals present and uh, Mr. I Isidore, you look marvelous that evening and you did an excellent job with your presentation. Grateful for you for your response to, to helping us out that evening. And the very proud Miss Kingston, my goodness, I've never seen you so proud and normally when I see you, you're putting some fire out at school and, and encouraging teachers to do this and do that. And, but that night was something that you deserve that. And I'm just grateful that you were there for the kids. Uh, as the, uh, uh, Trustee Stewart said, I was part of that meeting on the 23rd at Interagency. I also uh, representing, represented our board at the Sister City Fundraising. And, um, grateful to have the privilege of being there. And yesterday, uh, VCAT and the Vallejo City Unified School District collaboration at, uh, was held at Jesse Bethel. And, and I, I feel strongly that this is in the right direction to, to have that collaboration, uh, Dr. Bishop, to help e our kids and to help VCAT at the same time. Um, because of time element, I, I will, uh, and my report there, Mr. Pre my Madam President, thank you so much. Thank you, I will be brief. Um, I'm part of the John W. Finney High School Committee where we are planning um, the unveiling of the sign and the dedication of the school. Um, we uh, should be having that pr uh, program, uh, I believe early November. I believe that's when it is. Um, but I'll have more updates as we move along. Um, I have participated in tutoring on Monday and Wednesdays at Vallejo High School. I attended this morning the exit uh, audit conference for the district for the 2011 year, I believe, yes. Uh, I also attended this morning the Vallejo Education Business Alliance uh, Committee meeting um, and the um, entire committee uh, will meet on Friday morning, and they do meet at 7.30 in the morning. I've attended several athletic events, both for Bethel and Vallejo High School, and um, uh, as um, president of Solano County School Boards Association, we're planning our fall meeting for November the 18th, and again, um, the uh, members of the various county school district school boards uh, have asked that Vallejo City Unified again be one of the presenters at, for the fall meeting. They're very impressed with, with um, what we're doing concerning um, the Positive Youth Justice Initiative um, program and um, but they also want uh, information concerning how we use our site uh, safety officers. Because um, many of them have police on campus, but have, um, are looking at a more effective way to um, provide coverage, widespread coverage as we do, um, and cost, the cost balancing that um, uh, piece. So, I'm looking forward to uh, as many people as possible, as many board members and others who want to attend, and looking for a great presentation from, from Vallejo City Unified to Solano County School Boards Association. That concludes um, my report. I have uh, visited Glen Cove kind of on a regular basis because I've been dropping the grandkids off. I know uh, Blanche commented that she has grandchildren. I have four boys. You just have one. Yes, just one boy or girl? Two boys, one at the school. Okay, two boys. Receive the letter. Okay, you have two. 
grandchildren. Two grandchildren. Well, I have four. <laughs> so I thought I would, you know, I'm just doing the one, one upsmanship on you. <laughs> okay. That concludes my report. <laughs> report of the superintendent, program showcases. Thank you, President Wilson, um, Vice President Ubaldi, trustees, Stewart and Momsen, uh, parents, community members, friends, staff. Going to report to you about instead of school showcases this year, we'll have program showcases. Um, throughout the year last year, you were asking about how are we going to know whether or not our programs are effective. And um, so we decided instead of having our schools spotlighted because of the district initiatives and because of the alignment with what we're doing with all of our schools, we decided on program showcases. So you can see that October 16th will start. Our first one will be elementary and K through eight schools. And this will not be, you know, one after the other. It'll be a joint presentation from those principals or relevant principals. Then on January 8th, there will be a STEAM Middle Program Showcase. April 9th will be our wall-to-wall -wall academies. And June 4th, we'll have a presentation with regard to full-service community schools. As we've done in the past, we'll travel the community. At your request, we want to continue doing that so we can geographically be in different places throughout Vallejo so that people that otherwise might not attend a board meeting have an opportunity to do so. And each program um, showcase will highlight the following. Certainly, we want to make sure that there's alignment with our mission, vision, values, and goals. We'll be presenting relevant data. Common Core alignment, as you know, next year is full implementation of Common Core. So we want to talk about how that program is aligning to those standards, program design, and then program evaluation. So that's what you have to look forward to. Are there any questions on any of that before I move forward? Okay, and then um, President Wilson, you must be doing a good job of bragging about what we're doing at the county level. I do that very well. Yes, ma'am, um, because we've been invited November 13th at 6 p.m. to present to the Solano County Board of Education. I'm so glad we have our principals in the house because they should mark their calendars now. And we'll have teachers and other members of those leadership teams presenting to the county board to talk about our wall-to-wall -wall academies. I've said before that we are the only school district in California that I've identified anyway that is moving in this wall-to-wall -wall direction. And Larry Acera sits on our wall-to-wall -wall advisory for the district and therefore was talking with the county board about the fact that we should be spotlighted on this evening. Um, so please know that we will be up there on November 13th uh, attempting to represent the district in the most uh, great way possible. Thank you so much. That ends. Oh, and lastly, I wanted to say that we did I did follow up and have a conversation with Matt Smith at MIT. Um, we spoke at length about what we heard with regard to the uniform versus dress code policy that's being implemented at MIT. Um, and he has been in constant communication with his community. He's <coughs> he hearing the same things that you have been. And he believes that he's gotten it to the point where there's an understanding at the community level about what really is occurring. So we had a really good conversation. I told him it was in the interest of partnership that I was reaching out to him because we have no real jurisdiction ov over the matter. And he was very thankful and really great conversation with regard to follow up in that area. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bishop. Dr. Ubaldi. Uh, point of clarification, Dr. Bishop. You said Tuesday, did you not? Uh, November, it's uh, November 13th. I, I don't know that I said Tuesday. Oh, okay, I thought you said it's Tuesday. Okay. But November November 13th, 13th uh -huh. is at 6. Uh huh. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. I see Vallejo will be uh, all over the map uh, 
the county school board, uh, the county sc school board association, and we are planning to um, uh, make a presentation to the city uh, council also. Thank you, Dr. Bishop. At this time, um, we'll move on to item 8.11, adoption of resolution number 2603, certifying that instructional uh, materials adopted for use in 2013-2014 are, are legally compliant. At this time, we will um, open the public hearing on this matter. We're now open for the public hearing on uh, instructional materials. So I, I good yes. evening. <laughs> I believe uh, we will ask for any comments from the community on the resolution declaring that we have a sufficiency of textbooks throughout the district. Are there any uh, comments from the community? Are there any comments from the community? Okay. We have sufficient textbooks. <laughs> the public hearing, oh, I'm sorry. Comments from the board, <coughs> Thank uh, you. Dr. Ubaldi. On the middle paragraph, <coughs> where it states, whereas the administration of districts has determined the sufficient textbooks and instructional material being provided to each student, including English learners. Um, I guess the question I'm asking is how are they adequate and appropriate to what they're learning? Do, I mean, do they have actual understanding uh, of, of the text to enable them to, to understand what, what they're being uh, 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 taught? Dr. Ubaldi, yes, the materials that we have for our English language, for ELD, English language development, um, are adopted by the state of California. So these are materials that are approved by the state for, um, for us to provide this. We also choose materials. We, we have um, an adoption process whereby classroom teachers have the opportunity to review the materials test them with students to see what kind of materials our students respond well to. And we have just in the past couple of years adopted new materials for our elementary students, for our middle school students, and um, we have a program in place for high school students as well. Um, teachers also you, um, receive training on a regular basis for the implementation of these materials to ensure that they're correctly used. The reason, Madam President, that I raise this is that I know that we have improved our teaching uh, and curriculum nowadays, but I recall as an immigrant <coughs> in this country, it was so difficult for me to learn without the kind of support that we have now. And I just felt that I needed to really ask that question because uh, it helped my, my learning growth at that time. Thank, Thank you, you. ma'am. Any, any other comments? If not, the public hearing is closed. And this is an action item. If there's no further discussion, I would move to adopt resolution 2603. I second that, Madam President. It has been moved and seconded that we adopt Resolution number 2603, certifying that instructional materials adopted for the use in the 2013-14 year are legally compliant. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ad resolution adopted. Thank you. Thank you. We now have a um, information item, uh, unaudited actuals financial report. Uh, President Wilson, Vice President Ubaldi, trustees, Dr. Bishop, 
I'm happy tonight to present the 2012-13 Unaudited Actuals Financial Report. This is an information item for the board, and it's um, all the many varied financial statements for the end of the last school year. Um, I want to thank James Arcala and the business office and TRR and all the people that work together on this. The full report uh, is 265 pages of fascinating financial information. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it is on the district website. A copy of the full report is at the reception desk. And there's a table of contents in the front. So anybody that's interested can go on the website and look at the various reports, such as the lottery report, special ed, transportation, and look at how the district spent the money last year in any category without uh, having to read the whole thing. But what I'm going to uh, present to you tonight is a summary of the revenues and the expenditures with a special emphasis on the general fund, but the full report has a financial statement for every fund in the district. The California, oh, more. Um, the California Department of Education has many reports all rolled up into this one report. It summarizes how we spend our money by individual fund, such as general fund, cafeteria fund, adult ed. Then it takes the same information, breaks it out by program, like uh, special ed, general ed. And then it also takes the same information and breaks it out by category of expense, such as teachers, aides, uh, benefits, books, and supplies. So it's the same information presented in several different formats to meet all the different reporting requirements. Uh, it also is the place where we certify that we're compliant with maintenance of effort requirements, <coughs> and uh, basically it meets all the <coughs> mandates. So looking first at the general fund, the general fund is split into two categories, unrestricted revenue and restricted revenue. Unrestricted revenue is the money that we have wide discretion on how we use it, and restricted revenue are all the various categorical funds uh, where each program has its own specific guidelines and requirements. So in looking at this first, uh, uh, display here, you can see that the district received $83 million in unrestricted revenue last year, and of that, 79% or 65.9, almost $66 million was revenue limit funding. So when you see what a huge portion of our unrestricted revenue is revenue limit funding, you can understand that when the state deficits revenue limit, they're deficiting, if they deficited at 23% over the last five years, they're deficiting 79% of our basic educational funding. Then we had state revenue of a little under $16 million, and this was lottery money, instructional materials that you just approved for textbooks and other books, the gate program, class size reduction, summer school, things like that. So altogether, we received $83 million. Now, how did we spend that money? We spent $73 million in the unrestricted portion of the budget, and the first three lines there, certificated, classified, and employee benefits, for salaries and benefits was 83% of our budget. So you can see schools are one of the most labor intensive uh, businesses. So any shortfall in funding automatically affects uh, salary and benefits and our ability to provide um, those positions. The other large item, services and operating expenses, is utilities and contract services. And then the last line there, the credit of $2.5 million, that's indirect cost. That's where all those restricted programs 
each pay a percentage of their operating budget to the district for us providing them with space, uh, payroll services, human resource services, and, and things like that. So they help offset some of our cost. Next, we have restricted revenues, and as I said, those are the categorical funds. Last year was the last year that you will see um, this amount of money for restricted programs because the bulk of those will all be now collapsed into the LCFF new funding formula. But um, last year, the main categories there were special ed between federal and state revenue was $10.5 million. But those are our various Title I, Title II, and No Child Left Behind. So we received $28 million in restricted revenue, but we spent $36 million in restricted expenditures. Um, salaries were 72% of categorical expenses and a large portion of categorical funds are spent on contract services, uh, which was the five million. And then you can see the last expenditure line there was the $2 million payment of indirect cost. So the 2.5 that the general fund received was two million from categorical programs and the rest was what the other funds like uh, adult ed and cafeteria and all paid towards their share of expenses. So putting all that together, um, the unrestricted revenue exceeded unrestricted expense by $9.6 million, but the restricted revenue, restricted expense exceeded restricted revenue by 8.6 million. So um, altogether, we ended up 986,000 uh, positive in last year's operating expenses. Before you looked at the transfers between funds and the contributions. The transfers between funds are confusing and misleading <laughs> because that's fund 17. That's the money where we look at how much we think we're going to be short deficit financed in the revenue limit. And then we had flexibility to take categorical programs and apply a portion of those categorical funds to our general operating expenses. And so there were a lot of ins and outs of transfers where we would uh, take money from one program, put it into Fund 17 as a reserve, and then based on where we needed it in another program, pull it back out. What's interesting is the $10 million contribution from unrestricted to restricted. And um, the next page shows those four programs. So basically, the general fund unrestricted uh, comes out in the black. The restricted programs are in the red. The general fund unrestricted gives the restricted programs money and makes a contribution to subsidize those programs. And these are our four main areas where we uh, contributed money. Uh, the district contributed four and a half million to special education. They contributed 1.9 million to home to school transportation. Special ed transportation was only uh, augmented by $70,000. And then we make a contribution to the ongoing major maintenance account, which was three million, and that almost exactly comes up to the 10 million um, that the general fund con contributed to other programs. So where did we um, in the year? Um, there was, we've corrected it on the slide, but um, Dr. Ubaldi brought it to my attention that there's an error in the handout. The first line should say beginning balance July 1st, 2012. So if you look at all the ins and outs and our contribution uh, to the restricted programs that I just mentioned, uh, 
we drew down our reserves by a million one, but we still ended up the year with $9.7 million. We're comfortably in the black. And I gave you a breakdown there of what that $9.7 million is uh, made up of. And of that, the general fund has $3.8 million in their reserve for economic uncertainties, which is 3.4%, and we're only required to have 3%. And then we also have 998000 in lottery money that's unrestricted that can be spent in any area. So we have um, a little over a 4% reserve in the general fund at the end of the year. So people usually uh, ask how were we doing on the revenue limit and how were we doing um, ADA. And for last year, um, you can see that what we should have received under the revenue limit if there had been no state cutbacks was a million, uh, was $1,500 per student more than we actually received. We should have received $6,700 per student and we only received 52. So that's one of the reasons things have been so extremely tight and it's also one of the main factors uh, that will be addressed, hopefully, in the new funding formula. Our revenue limit ADA is a little below 13,000 uh, both years. I'm happy to report that we met our maintenance of effort in all three areas. This is something the auditors look at. Um, our teacher administrator ratio is above the 55 percent, and we met our maintenance of effort in special ed and no child left behind. So um, <coughs> the fiscal condition of the district, as I mentioned, we uh, dealt with the state revenue limit deficit. We used the flexibility that we had between programs to maintain the general educational program. I put there the district continues to deficit finance, but that's not true for this year. I use present tense. It should have been past tense. Last year we deficit finance, but we were still able to maintain the required reserves, and all of our state loan payments were budgeted for and paid as scheduled. Um, the next page, the next two pages, basically let you know uh, where we ended the year in each of the other funds. The adult education, child development, uh, student nutrition, all had healthy ending balances and none of them had significant gains or losses. Student nutrition continues to do very well uh, and have a very strong ending balance. The bond and facility funds <coughs> Uh, as planned, projects continue to be funded and uh, MELS division continues to do those uh, capital improvement projects and those funds have been drawn down as they were planned and there's nothing of significance there. So in conclusion, <laughs> We filed the 2012-13 unaudited actuals in a complete and timely manner with full compliance of the requirements of the State Education Code, including all the categorical and supplemental reports. It was very important um, to James and I and also to TRR that the auditors be able to have in the unaudited actuals all the categorical programs and all the reports because since we're running, it will probably be a year to 18 months behind in the audit, we wanted to be sure that when they came into audit and I'm back into retirement, um, that they were, <laughs> <laughs> that they were able to have all the information and not try to figure out what we did. So instead of doing the categorical programs on spreadsheets, we actually filed the state forms, the CAT forms, as part of the unaudited actuals. 
Uh, they encourage you to do that, but it's not required. <coughs> but we decided we wanted to have it part of the official document for auditing purposes. Um, and so we'll continue to carefully. My plan now for the uh, <laughs> first interim report is this is a wonderful uh, financial statement as far as what happened last year, but everything's changed for this year. We don't have a revenue limit. We don't have categorical programs. It's all the new funding model. And so what I think is critical is that we take a look line by line and rebuild our 2013-14 this year budget using the new funding formula because our current budget has these numbers rolled forward because that's what you knew in June. That was your best estimate of where you would be. Um, and that report is as of October 30th and it's due to the board at the first board meeting in December. So it's my goal to uh, be able to come forward at that time. Now that we know how we ended last year and say, okay, this is where we ended up last year. Now where are we under the new LCFF funding? Director Stewart, thank you, uh, Ms. Hart, for that very thorough report. Thank to you to You're UF welcome. James. And um, I didn't know that you were going back in return. <laughs> <laughs> I have She's eight <laughs> I have eight grandchildren. <laughs> oh she all the grandchildren <laughs> war. She's trying to outdo me now. I'm gonna get I'm gonna tell my kids they gotta get to working on this. <laughs> <laughs> Director Stewart. Thank you. I wanted to uh, comment on what you said there at the end related to uh, making this an apples and apples discussion, not such an apples and oranges right. conversation. Taking what we have this year and applying it to the new formula so we know what we will be doing moving forward and can connect the dots. I think that's a tremendous point, um, especially considering um, you know, for a lot of districts, they're going to be looking at, well, now that we have this new formula, we get to do what we really wanted to do all along, and, and you can get taken off course. But I think, um, you know, really calculating what we have this year, I think it's a tremendous strategy in placing it into that new formula. I think I'm, I'm just, I was really happy to hear that. That's what I was thinking the whole time through your uh, presentation, and you provided that right at the end, and I think that's exceptional, so thank you. I want to note that um, uh, Solano County Office of Education uh, sent a letter to uh, the superintendent and um, in that it uh, noted in looking for what you guys submitted, um, it complimented us on improvements. Um, it says that uh, the Sol Solano County Office of Ed has performed a brief technical review of this year's reports, report and data, and want to share some notice noticeable improvements from prior years. The original DAT file submitted was an official file. The original files have not always been official files in prior years. The official file signi signifies that there are no fatal errors included in the file and is a required status before the data can be uploaded to the state. And I want to compliment you on that. And then the technical review checks for um, uh, UA has no, and no is in bold, large letters, errors that need to be addressed. This is also a significant improvement from prior years and caught our immediate attention. Wow. And And this is very, very, very significant and very important to anyone who understands uh, because, you know, we're, even though we have local control back, even though, you know, we're in the black, but that's a very slippery slope. And um, we are going to um, ensure that we stay in the black. So therefore, um, 
we will be operating um, cautiously because 3.4%, um, that's nothing. Nothing whatsoever. An error can be fatal. And that's what we do not want to happen. So uh, we've, we're charged with remaining in the black. We're charged with being responsible. And this board plans on being responsible. Well, and I thank Dr. Bishop for her support with, uh, you know, I have a lot of years of experience, but TRR has the technical knowledge to run those. Uh, data checks and so it was a really good team we had put mm -hmm. together that they would run these very complicated uh, computer programs and then they would come back and say you got an error message on this an error message on this and then our people would go through and spend the extra time to research and find out what was giving that error message and even though they weren't fatal errors mm -hmm. it was our goal not to just stop after we cleared the fatal errors but to clear all the errors and and mm -hmm. so it was a combination of them being able to tell us what lines on the form were kicking out with an error message and then our people being willing to come in and they did they came in and worked that weekend to be sure every one of those little error messages was cleared. So I'll be sure, I was, I was not aware of that letter, but I'll be sure I share that with staff because they need to know that attention to detail was recognized and appreciated. It is um, it's just so important. And this team that has been put together, um, this is money well spent. Many corporations make the fatal error of when um, uh, they're cutting, uh, they cut in the finance office. And that is not the place <laughs> to be making your first hits because um, this is our safety net. And I am extremely, extremely pleased um, with um, what um, has been provided in this report and with in the letter from Solano County. I have one card, Mr. Berkey World, and then I'll have Blanche's card. Uh, President Wilson and members of the board, I just have a, a small question. On slide number nine, where it's titled General Fund Ending Balances Reserves, you have unrestricted and restricted in there. If it's general fund, can you just explain why there's restricted money in there? Because my understanding is unrestricted is general fund. So why do we have both uh, unrestricted and restricted money in there for it's it would appear to me, and I may be wrong, probably wrong, so you can clear, you can tell me why is the restricted money in the gen, in the general fund ending balance? That it, our categorical programs that their carryover is restricted for them to use. So Title One carryover can only be used in Title One, and uh, various state programs. Uh, can only be used in those programs. So for instance, uh, lottery money has an unrestricted and a restricted portion, and the restricted portion of lottery money has to stay restricted. So it's kind of like when the funds come in, it's given a restricted hat, and so that income and expense and their carryover year after year stays in the restricted accounts. It can't come back into the general fund. But the, but I, I, Unrestricted. Yeah, it's all general fund, but it's two parts. Oh, okay. I got you now. Thank you. Is it my turn? Thank yes, you. Thank it you. Is. I, I just really may have I yes. announce you. You certainly may. <laughs> <laughs> it's now Miss Gross turn. Thank you. She has one grandchild. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, I have two, darling. Oh, two? Two, yes. Two. Still behind. But listen, I, I really had to come here 
<clears throat> to speak on this budget, you know, I've been looking at the district's budgets for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Thank you. It's very easily interpreted. It's put together wonderfully. You can see where all the numbers go. And it's not even about the pie. It's about how you categorize all of the funding. And I'm just going to say, you know, 15, 20 years ago, if we had something like this, hello. But thank you. Thank Job well done. Now, I, I do, and it, it, al it almost makes you want to come and work for the district because you know you're going to get paid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have a question, however, and I want to talk about uh, the revenue limit funding in the um, ADA category. Did we meet the ADA minimum uh, in, in funding last for this school year? And that's the first question. And then secondly, what is the ADA per child this current year, if you have that information, please? Um, I don't have the revenue limit per ADA per child uh, right off the top of my head, but it's right around $6,500 before the add-ons for categorical and um, our low, our high incident, our English language learners and low income. Okay. So our base revenue limit number um, is around 6,500 and then with the add-ons. Okay, and that's for but six. I can give you that information. It's over, it's a little over 7,000. It's a little over 7,000 and we're talking uh, school year 2013 to 2014? Right, but the, the difference is they're only funding, um, they're, they're implementing us getting our full amount mm -hmm. over eight years. Okay. So we only get 12% of that increased funding each year. Okay. So the ultimate then when it's all done it's is going like to be about? It's 68, 6900. Okay. Thank I you. I mean 78, 7900. Thank you very, very much. Again, excellent, excellent report. Too cool. Thanks. Thank you. Again, thanks very much to the team. Um, I guess that's Director Mumson's light. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful report, ditto, thank you. I did some uh, s small trivia calculating of my own over here in the, the, uh, the lottery, which was supposed to be our saving <laughs> grace, comes out to uh, $69.37 per ADA. <laughs> That's uh, uh, based on our last reported uh, ADA by Mr. Cheap. Thank you. Director Ubaldi. I too want to thank uh, Madam President, uh, Ms. Hart. I haven't asked a question because I did a lot of questioning earlier because I couldn't understand it fully. And I find the, the report uh, well written and uh, and also very helpful. Thank you. Dr. Bishop. President Wilson, I just wanted, if, if possible, Ms. Hart, could you just describe, just brief summary of how we're preparing. Um, the Affordable Care Act is in process now, mm -hmm. and so I thought it'd be important for the board just to hear a little bit about what we're doing okay. and pos some of the potential delays that will result because I know our bargaining units are very anxious to have these conversations mm -hmm. and so if you just touch sure. on our preparation for that. Okay. Um, our requirements under the Affordable Care Act uh, coincided with our open enrollment period so it worked out really well that as we were looking at uh, our own plans going to effect January 1st so is the Affordable Care Act. So um, Zenobia and Business Services and I have met with um, a lot of people that were familiar with the Affordable Care Act and we sent out a letter as we were required to all employees effective uh, October 1st. They got the letter a week ago telling them about the Affordable Care Act, about Covered California, uh, who to contact, uh, not for them as employees, but for their family members and, and uh, spouses, children, and also uh, if they're below part-time, 
you know, some of our cafeteria workers and aides and stuff that don't qualify for district benefits. Then because um, we really strongly support the intent of the Affordable Care Act, uh, the superintendent had asked us to design posters and put them out in schools with all the information because we wanted to be sure our parents and our students and everybody knows uh, who to contact, where to go, what phone number, what uh, email address, and we're very fortunate that we have eight or nine health care providers in Northern California who are pro offering plans under the Affordable Care Act, and so we listed those providers and gave information on that. As far as the district uh, and negotiations, one of the things that we're required to do as a district is to provide an affordable option. And right now, because we're CalPERS, they've added another plan this year uh, that's a, a Blue Shield HMO plan that meets the federal requirements as an affordable option. And we also have a Blue Shield PPO plan that's just a few dollars more a month. So we do have affordable <coughs> plans that we offer through uh, CalPERS. The question that we're doing the initial study now is whether or not um, our contribution to that plan is sufficient. And that's our negotiated district contribution. And that fluctuates by person because it's based on a percentage of these people's income. So for a lot of our certificated people, we clearly uh, you know, meet that requirement, but where it gets a little trickier is with classified employees that are just working 30 hours at uh, entry-level salaries, uh, whether or not they can afford our plan. So we have 1,900 people that fall under this provision. That includes all employees, temporary employees, and substitutes that have worked for us in the last year and a half. And Keenan uh, will be bringing a contract forward. They're doing a proposal right now to take all those employees' salaries and run the calculations and tell us which groups of employees we would have to change the contribution uh, and what that number should be in order to meet that requirement. It's waived, the penalty for not doing that is waived for a year. So unfortunately, it appears to me that um, we need to be proactive and not say, well, we've just got a year because our employees still need to know what our intention is as far as our contribution to those plans and the way things will change. Uh, and what's the best option for them. There's a lot of unknowns right now as to uh, the requirement that full-time is 30 hours or more um, and things that will definitely affect our labor negotiations and we're trying to get those answers as soon as possible for people. Is there anything I forgot? I, I really appreciate that, and thank you, Dr. Bishop. And, I'm, and I am very pleased that we're being proactive. Yes. It is very important for us to be proactive. And um, yeah, it's very important for our, um, to our employees also. Um, and, and we want to look out for our employees and provide them with the best information, accurate information, and to be very proactive and informative. So uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, Dr. Bishop, we also have. Yes, President Wilson um, has asked that I acknowledge that uh, Mr. Izuka is in the room. Uh, Mel, do you want to come forward at this time if you might have some comments about your work with us over the last several months? We certainly appreciate your being here today. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bishop. Um, as you know, I was appointed to uh, um, not replace, but certainly. Uh, be the next um, state trustee for uh, Dr. D'Amelio. And in the about four and a half months I've been working with the district, I've 
had a couple observations here. Um, I, I found out, I found that the district staff is truly committed to trying to do a great job here. And they've suffered a lot of um, issues because of the lack of funding, which all school districts have had to do, but they've still managed to persevere as well as they could. And I think that's a, a, a remarkable uh, testament to um, their commitment to doing a good job for the children of um, the city of Vallejo. Um, my observation of the school board, which I've shared with Dr. Bishop, is that I think uh, the school board is also displays that same commitment. And that has also impressed me because I have seen um, and sat in on a number of discussions with um, school boards in the past and other districts where it's, we don't have the same sort of um, commitment and uh, wherewithal in terms of what they considered the right thing to do. And I've, I've heard that demonstrated a number of times here at board meetings, and I want to commend the school board for having um, that sort of commitment. I think it's, it's um, will allow this district to continue on in the right path to where the solvents, insolvency that the district suffered will be just a, a distant memory in the not too distant future. I think that's uh, truly remarkable. And I understand um, from the uh, bargaining unit's point of view that they've had to uh, give up a great deal. And, and that's especially true with the insolvency and then the corresponding uh, downturn in the state economy and the revenue that this district has acquired as demonstrated in our unaudited actuals here. Um, and I know that there's uh, a commitment to try to do things right. That's uh, Dr. Bishop has mentioned to me and I've heard from the school board. And I think as we go through time, uh, that commitment will be fulfilled. And I think it was discussed just here recently uh, by um, Trustee Stewart about redoing the budget to where we mirror this year's funding scenario. And I think that's actually the first step in trying to determine um, the sort of assistance that the district can work with its bargaining units because that would be my recommendation and and I know Dr. Bishop and I have discussed this on several um, occasions so I, I believe the district's heading in the right direction um, I've mentioned that to the State Department of Education that we are going in the right direction um, um, I think there's been an improvement um, in a lot of areas from what I can see personally and from um, my examination of some of the data. So I think we're going in the right right mode. Uh, I think it's the right time. I think you have a good staff here in which uh, they can do the work. And so it's just a matter of continuing on um, in that same vein. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Item 8.3.1, an action item, lease agreement, leaders and community alternatives, Inc. Mr. Jordan. Yes, thank you again. Uh, this item, uh, you heard um, uh, the presentation earlier as information, and this is the action item that's associated with it. Again, this item um, is just an action item for me to your approval this evening. Are there any questions? I have no cards. This is an action item. I would move to approve if there is no discussion. I second that, Madam President. It has been moved and approved. Uh, it has been moved and seconded that we <laughs> uh, approve the lease agreement leaders and community alternatives, Inc. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, the lease agreement is approved. Thank you. Item 8.3.2, permanent status for certificated personnel 2013-2014 school year. And this is an information item? It is. It is recommended that the governing board um, receive the information on certificated teachers who has achieved permanent status in the district beginning 2013-2014 school year. I'm particularly happy with this um, list because Michael Wilson III is on it. So that might mean that uh, he's permanently employed and mom didn't have to, <laughs> mom can do less. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this is an information item. Any other comments? Thank you. Thanks. Eight point four point one uh, policy update for first reading, Miss Cheney. This is the first reading. Good evening, Governing Board. I've decided uh, I've been asked to step in for my colleague, Dr. Shackelford, so I will try to do it at her standard. So tonight we present for first reading updates in our policies recommendations that have made by CASBO to the district for various policies as they relate to changes in the law. To give you an idea of the process, this information is provided to Dr. Shackelford. She then summarizes the data. We communicate with the various departments to get their input on these updates to make recommendations back to the Policy Review Board, and then they're reviewed by um, different individuals of the committee community that sit on that board. So tonight, we propose these items for first reading. I have no cards. Are there any? Um, Director Mumson? Uh, in reading this policy, I discovered that it covers a, a wide range of issues. And stuff. Yes, it does. It's all-encompassing. All it's like the policy. <laughs> so I like that. That's cool. Uh, however, um, I'm looking for language uh, as to the school site councils for, for direction and, and how a school site council operates. In speaking with uh, various uh, site councils, I've noticed a, um, a, a broad, uh, how can I say this, the, the guidelines for what it is. You ask a parent, what do, well how, so how do you like the school being on the school site council? And some it goes all the way from, well, we we just approve what the principal has put together or so in some on some sites it's just mainly ran by the principal or you know, the, the the involvement and uh what i'm looking for is um an edge a, a class or a description when a person becomes a site uh, council member that there should be some sort of uh indoctrination uh um a program or something brief, a pamphlet, a booklet as to what the, what this what you now you're a school site council member. What do you, what what do you do? That that would be uniform throughout the district, and that oh. that would be uniform throughout the district. And I, I don't know if the a policy is a place for it, but uh, we've been so asking for this. There's no policy in place, but I invite you to our training tomorrow evening, right down the hall. Okay. For school site councils, so every year. We have two in the fall and spring. Is it uh, is it mandatory that uh, council members attend? No, See? it's not mandatory. We we encourage them, of course, but mm -hmm. can't require them. Uh, no, that's right. Thank you. Uh, yes, I do. I do have a comment. Uh, thank you very much again. Uh, this is um, item 8.4.1. Uh, my question is, um, will these policy updates be available online for review? And, and, and as they move along and when they're finished, Will they go to our local libraries like like they were in the past? You know, there were there were policies at the reference desk which were really wonderful years and years ago. Because when I would do research on certain issues and the school district closed at five, the reference desk at the library, which stayed open until nine, was a wonderful resource for me. And there are a lot of parents who who just want to know what are the conclusive policies of this district. Absolutely, um, they are posted online on our website. And I don't know the exact, uh, I don't even think there's a passcode. It's just public. No, it yeah. is public. Okay, and, and then so your question And so my question is, you know, you know, we assume that everybody uh -huh. hits the computer buttons. Sure. It's really easy, but there are so many people who do not yet. Okay. And, and if it's possible to have the book, the codes, okay. at, at, at I would recommend JFK and Springstown. It depends on their space. Mm -hmm. But I know JFK would probably be very open to it. We can if we can consider that. that, that'd be great. Sure. Thank you. Okay. 
No, this is just um, information for first reading. Microphone, 9.1 personnel actions. Any questions, comments from the board? Hearing none, this is an information item. Thank you very much. Oh, I do have, excuse me, I'm a little slow here, Madam President. Uh, on the, the top list, you have a Richard Barber, and then appointed, and then the next line, the next column, you have a Richard Barber resignation, right? Please help me understand that. Um, this was a band teacher that we hired, and um, I think he, once he was able to sit down and really go over the needs of the school in terms of ha needing a full-time band position, he decided that he needed a full-time band position, and it is a part-time band okay. position. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to uh, ten point zero um, consent items for governing board. Um, is there any item that we would want pulled? I have no cards from the community to pull any. This is an action item. Madam President, I move that we adopt 10.1 through 10.8 as a consent item. Second. It has been moved and seconded that we adopt 10.1 through 10.8. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, all items 10.1 through 10.8 are adopted from the consent calendar. Um, community forum. Oh, no. Let me see. Is that 12.0? Oh, we do have a card from uh, Berkey World. Thank you, President Wilson. Uh, I just want to talk uh, what Ms. Grove talked about earlier about the letter from the district attorney's office. I was watching the news last night, and it may be tied in with what the state attorney general is doing. It's a program for the entire elementary school truancy. But the way I understood it was talked about is basically had to do with nothing more than dollars and cents. It's because all the districts across the state are losing so much money from elementary kids not going to school for whatever reason. Which brings me around again as Ms. Grove said, this is kind of a negative thing with law enforcement. I would again urge you, as I have talked before, about getting back with the police department to have some uh, police officers on the school campus to work with the kids. It was in the past a very positive effect for both the students and for the police. It gives the students uh, time to relate to the police officers more than just the police officers happen to arrest either them or their or their parents. Uh, so I would again urge you, I will continue to urge you, I think you know that, to start some type of a program with the police department, at least get into uh, a discussion with the new chief of how you might be able to work with him and the city in getting some type of a program going. Thank you very much. Um, aren't, aren't the police uh, of, uh, Officers, part of positive youth justice is the police department at the table with us. Uh, invite uh, uh, the police uh, to positive youth justice. Uh, and I think, um, and I also would like to recommend that Ms. Uh, Grove might be interested in this particular. I've been there. You've been there? Okay. 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 Thank you. Good person to have on board. Future board agenda items. Director Mumpson. I would request a, um, a report on, uh, on, on overages. 
<coughs> Over inches. The follow up. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Other. Um, I'd like to, um, for us to get as soon as possible the date for the Vallejo High School meeting. Um, so that we can get that set up because we said we were going to go back there <laughs> and I want to go back there. Um, any other items? The next special um, governing board meeting will be on October 16th at Elsa Wiedemann Elementary School. This is us moving around the community. If there's nothing else, 